So before we get into the, I guess, the nitty gritty of uh, spring training workouts, uh, we should probably go over the Tigers signing Gio Urshela to a one-year, $1.5 million contract. Um, and there's incentives for plate appearances hit. I think he gets like 100K at 500 plate appearances, then another 100K at 550. Um, nothing crazy. And yeah, Tigers got him for $1.5 million to, I guess, uh, come compete for the third base job. Uh, what do you think about the signing, Chris? I think you were the lowest on the signing from the Discord. So, <laughs> Well, yeah, you know, I mean, I feel like we've, we've brought him up before. He, he's kind of one of the, the, the fringe guys that was out there where you're wondering if he's going to get a major league deal. Um, I don't, I don't mind it. He doesn't do a whole lot for me. It feels like a redundancy in several areas. Uh, I, I know, you know, it's, it's interesting because people will talk about him being this, this, you know, really great defender and he does, he'll make these spectacular plays. You'll see, he makes a lot of highlight plays. I remember when he was on the Yankees, they're like, Oh, we, you know, he's our solution at third base. Uh, but then, you know, basically all the defensive metrics, uh, defensive run saves, uh, saved thinks he's good uh up you know slightly above average since uh 2019 he's like what did i have i have it up here he's uh plus 11 defensive run save which is four better than jose ramirez and right near alex bregman uh with cabrian hayes being number one with 65 uh but st- uh, outs above average consider considers him well below average in terms of uh defense i think it's his range he just apparently doesn't have a ton of range but, you know, once he gets to it, he gets everything. So maybe that's a good fit next to Javi Baez. Uh, it just feels a little bit, to me, like like a lot of insurance here. His insurance in case Matt Veerling uh, doesn't hit and isn't a third baseman. And in case Andy Abanez doesn't hit and isn't a third baseman. In case Zach McKinstry doesn't hit and isn't a third baseman. You've got another major league experienced option there. Uh, and, and there, you know, there's nothing wrong with average, or adding uh, kind of average big leaguers or fringe average big leaguers. I just, it doesn't. I think change the trajectory of the season in any way, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Deadly Ninja Bees uh, wanted to know uh, Urshela's injury. He missed most of last year with a fractured pelvis. Um, I think that was to end the year, right? I think he started the year fine yeah. and ended the year right. with a fractured pelvis. So um, that's something to keep an eye on going into the year. Uh, you, what was your reaction to the to the trade? Yeah, or, you know. To the it was signing? The- the old saying, right? There's no bad one year contracts, so certainly got to throw that in. It's dirt cheap, and that's fine too. It's, it's something the whole off season has been built around, right? This, and we've said it numerous times. They had the 28th ranked offense. He does not help the 28th ranked offense get a whole lot better, right? Uh, most likely, he's there to be depth and to play some defense. If he does mash lefties, that's great. That's a nice skill, and that can be something you can use. Um, but again, it's kind of been what the whole offseason is about for Scott Harris. They are putting a good floor in on the bottom of the roster, but they're not doing much to help the top end of the roster. We've said that many times. Uh, but it just seems like Gio Urshela kind of at this point in his career, a dime a dozen player, and the, the contract kind of says that. Um, if he starts 40 or 50 games against lefties, that's fine. If he ends up starting 120, 130 games, that's a problem. So, that's yeah, I'll I agree with that. Um, Deadly Ninja Bees again. Uh, is this Caesar Hernandez 24? Uh, probably not because uh, Hernandez was a minor league signing, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and this is a major league signing. Um, how about it, you, it, Raj? What was your. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. Oh, sorry. I would say, I would say it feels more like Wilson Ramos. This Wilson Ramos signing than than the Cesar Hernandez to me. You know they had Ramos, they rostered him for a little bit, and then was a Haas came up and was just hitting. So they're like, yeah, all right, see you later. Because they, yeah. I think, it was two million dollars for Wilson Ramos. So uh, it's nice insurance. If he doesn't hit, they'll. I don't think they'll hesitate to part with him early in the season. Even it's a very fungible contract. Yes. <laughs> you know, I, I look at it this way. I mean, you're looking at you're taking a bats away from. So you must. It shows that perhaps they don't think Kreidler is ready to come back. Also, a guy who gets lost in the mixture is Andre Lipsius. I mean, he plays third base, too. Also plays first. I like the signing because it does give him depth. As Uper said, um, gives him that bottom of the floor, if you will, and it kind of makes sure it shores up the defense a little bit on the left side. That being said, um, Kira will probably accept go down in the minors. That was something that um, – He's in camp too. 
And if he can be, I would love for him to be a pleasant surprise, but it's a lot of now, it's still a lot of what ifs versus knowns. And at least with Gio, you have somewhat of a known track record for what he can do with the glove. But is the thing that's going to move the needle? Sure. I mean, look at compared to the rest of the AL Central. I mean, it's buckus. I mean, the rest of the AL Central's just, you know, dust bunnies at this point. So they haven't really done anything. So that being said, it, it makes it easy, easy to look good when no one else has done anything. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, it does help the Tigers – shore up what they believe that they have at third base. And so, um, yeah, I, I, it, it's just a good for move for insurance purposes. By all means, I, I like it. One year, not a long commitment, and gives enough time to see what you have with Jace, with Young at third. It's funny because I could see this being a move that the Royals made where we were like, wow, good job, Royals. You guys are doing something. But uh, yeah. the Tigers made the move. Um. So do we think this uh, affects uh, Justin Henry Malloy being 26 man, Ryan Kreidler in that conversation, Andre Lipsius in that conversation? What do you think, Raj? I, I think so. I mean, you, Malloy is going to get more time in the outfield anyway, as uh, Harris indicated that, um, or Hinch started that with that. And so I think what's going to happen is you're going to see more likely it's down to really Kreidler, McKinstry. You know, you have this um, – mix there of these kind of like position player or rather utility players it's a battle of the utility players and um yeah so it's it, i think henry if malloy's gonna make this team he's gonna have to make it as like a a, a bat off the off the bench or an outfield bat so i but if i was if i was him look honestly if i'm the tigers he's a guy who needs regular at bats so um i saw fan graphs talk about how he's under like underrated prospect and there's something with his bat being said i don't want him to start the season toledo but if it's necessary i think there's gonna be another move that has to be facilitated with all this too I, uh, just there's too much utility guys there and i think one somebody has to go and whether they trade it or not or just simply let him go harris has no love loss and he will do whatever he has to do to, to finalize the roster you know, I mean, we should we should talk about uh, that they made room for uh, Urshela by DFAing T.G. Hopkins, uh, Tigers legend, who was uh, I, I believe on the roster yeah. for five days, six days after they had claimed Colton Ingram and and DFA'd him. And this is I I think, and this extends to Kreidler and Lipsius and Malloy and all these other guys. We've talked about this a bunch. Is is Scott Harris just seems to to not mind at all having major league level players in the minors to him. I think that's a bonus. And, and, and I think we're conditioned to say, Hey, this guy is ready for his chance at the big leagues. And that's not the way Scott Harris works. I think he wants, I think he'd love to have Ingram and Hopkins and Devin sweet all in Toledo, all these guys who he thought enough of to claim. And now hopefully he can stash him in Toledo. And it's the same way with Kreidler and all those other guys. Just, he likes to have these options. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I thought it was an uphill battle for Malloy heading into camp. Anyway, I, I, I don't know. I think we've talked about it before, but there's there are a lot of indicators there that that suggest that that he's got I mean, he's got a pretty uh, small window to to find success in the big leagues. Which is, I feel bad saying that because there there are things about him that you, or you really like, and there's a chance that he could be a solid player. But um, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like a guy that they're they're ready to go out there and make a regular. And so they'd rather have him getting steady at bats in Toledo than, than part-time play in the big leagues. You know, they're, they're more than happy to have Urshela on the bench uh, and they want Malloy to play more often. You, you have, uh, you have any thoughts on Urshela being 26 man? <clears throat> I think that, you know, given his track record, given the length of his career, uh, as long as he's fully healthy, I would assume um, he's been brought in. He will be on the roster. Uh, how that shakes out with everybody else, uh, hard to say at this time. But, yeah, it, it's it's always seemed like Malloy is on the outside looking in for this spring. I think he needs to go to Toledo and do what he did last year. Hit the snot out of the ball in April and May and see if he forces their hand into something. I uh, didn't hear, but do mentioned as 26 man, um, I think we all agree that just too many lefties in the outfield, um, Carpenter, uh, Meadows, and Green. Um so yeah, 
Yeah. Just along, but along the lines of Badu, like you know, we, we already thought he was kind of the odd man out anyway, right? And in in this Urshela signing makes it basically thirteen big leaguers, fourteen big leaguers for thirteen spots, and Badu seems like the odd man out. Um, there is a small possibility; it seems highly remote that Matt Veerling <laughs> could head back to Toledo. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, uh, you know, with, with given all the lefties, it would be nice to have a right-handed bat. But he does have an option remaining, I believe. So. There's a possibility there. I think, I think Harris just likes to have depth, and and somebody's going to get injured, and yeah. maybe these things take care of themselves. And Malloy's playing in Detroit because they need him, uh, and I think that's the way that uh, Scott Harris prefers it. Other than you know, promoting Colt Keith and, and securing him a spot, he wants these guys to be available uh, for, uh, at a you know as needed basis. And Hinch likes platooning, and so this makes a lot of sense because Gio does hit against lefties very well. And so I think with that in mind, with that proven track record, that that's going to help make the decision easier because Malloy doesn't really have that. And so that's where they're going to try to get – this is this is a young team in general. So I think the reason why people are just, just okay with it, uh, as Paul said in the chat, is because the bat. I mean, the Tigers need another bat. I mean, that we saw this earlier in the, in the chat with bringing in J.D. Martinez – but you see what the free agent market's going on right now. One thing that I wanted to mention real quick is the Marlins signed Tim Anderson. I mean, to a really below average. I mean, they yeah. really, really put the screws at Tim Anderson, and that was kind of like either take it or leave it, or you know, and that was it. And I, Tim Anderson, the guy won Ben MVP. I mean, the guy has won a batting crown, and this guy gets anyway. But my point is. That could be the same thing with J.D. Martinez, too. The, now it's going to be one of those things where now any team is expected to have an opportunity. And so with Detroit, this is, a, this is for them, a good way to not only put the purpose of PR, but it gives them that veteran bat that you know for sure is going to give you production. 